Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about how to actually bank. There's a new spell in the game that you guys should know about. It's called the Store Drift. You're going to get this spell by completing the quest Spider Nest right here in the top right. You can see a quest called Spider Nest, and uh, once you complete this, you're going to get, like I said, this quest called, or sorry, not quest, but the spell called Store Drift. The store drift is going to be huge. It's going to allow you to bank from pretty much anywhere on the map. And we're going to talk a little bit about this and how important this is to the game. So a lot of people have been complaining about banking in general and how it's so annoying to walk from one side of the map to another. And I want to showcase how big it is to have this store drift unlocked. So let's say you're doing something like, um, let's take a look at the map real quick when we're talking about wood cutting specifically. If we look for a store drift, here it is. Here's one right here in store drift in the overgrown trail, top right of the map. This is the farthest point to the actual location to where you could store the timber. So you don't want to run all the way back. What you want to do is utilize the store drift and you're going to use this store drift to actually put your suave logs or suave logs in right away. So it's a very, very useful tool. And there's store drifts all around the map. So another one for you branches up here in the top left, it's going to instantly and put them into the proper storages. And this is huge. Like I said, for every single profession, this is huge. If you go down to episode one, you have the same thing with fishing. So here, when you're doing your fishing, when you're doing your forging, you're going to have a store drift at sea road. You're going to be able to put this kelp, these shells, the flounder, um, very quickly into the store drift and they'll go into the correct storages. This is, a, like I said, a massive part of the game that people don't know about. And you guys definitely need to know about this fifth skill that you can get in the game. So I want to kind of showcase how this all works. I have a quest guide at the end of the video, by the way, today. So if you guys want to kind of watch on how I did the quest, and uh, it's definitely a nice little walkthrough because this quest is not really an easy, easy quest. It's a two star quest, or it's actually a one star quest, but the obelisk was a zero star quest. So it's one step up from the obelisk if you have done the obelisk quest. But Spider's Nest is a very, very important quest. And before we get started into the actual quest guide and kind of showcasing the store drift in action, I do want to say the Spider's Nest does take Carpentry level 32, which is the very biggest grind right now. If you, if you guys have been playing this game since release, you know that leveling after level 20 is very tedious. It takes a long time right now. So because of that, I would highly suggest using any extra knowledge points into the Convert XP uh, with your knowledge points. It's going to help you level up your carpentry while doing other things, or even if you're going all the way into carpentry, I would highly suggest going down uh, and actually using Gwen's lumber to buy the lumber, going into the carpenter's workshop using that lumber, and then, uh, like, or, like I said, it's it's going to be so much faster XP than actually wood cutting uh, and getting all your wood hand chopped, because again, you do not have these turn-ins yet, um, so you can't quickly turn them in at the store drift. You're actually going to have to run them all the way back down. So because of that, try to get enough gold to where you can actually just um, buy them from the store and quickly use them at the carpentry and then use your knowledge points you're gaining from that to actually put into XP for the carpenter as well. Because at level 32, after you unlock this quest, it's going to speed up the entire game progression so, so much. And a lot of people are talking about how long it takes to level up. Well, with the store drift unlocked, your leveling process is going to be so much faster. Again, it's every profession that it's going to help. So let's go in and take a look at the store drift and how it works. So the first thing you're going to realize is I'm getting leather drops or moderate deer hide from these tigers. So I don't want to have to run all the way to the storage. So what should I do? Unfortunately, this is maybe the worst spot to be when it comes to these store drifts. This is like the only time it's kind of far away. So we're going to run to that one real quick and kind of showcase this. Um, and if you click store drift prior to that, it's not going to be able to open because you have to be near a store drift marker. So we're going to run to one real quick. And on the way, I do want to say, guys, this is a huge part of the game, like a massive part. This is going to be the fifth spell that's going to help you uh, in such a big, big way. So make sure, like I said, if you want more guides like this, tips and videos for Brighter Shores in the near future, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. Another thing I do want to mention is we do see all the feedback in these comment sections in the videos. So if you guys want to continue to leave feedback about the game and things you don't like and things you want changed, definitely do so. I'm forwarding that kind of stuff over to Fen Research uh, bugs and support as well and kind of giving them our suggestions and our complaints. Uh, my really suggestion for you guys is understanding that this is a new game. It's a new experience. So they're going to take these considerations 
if it's a common thought. So definitely let me know in the comments about your thoughts on the re the whole really game experience so far. I actually walked by the store drift kind of blabbering. So let's go back here. Uh, here's the store drift. It shows that it's in the top right. There it is. So you can actually left click open. With that, it's going to actually open the store drift. And with that as well, you can just left click, deposit all. Look at that. All of it just instantly deposited. Uh, this is massive. And I, like I said, I didn't even showcase the best result for this. It's going to be great for mining. And this is a huge, huge deal. So there's a store drift in the minecart tunnel, which is right by Flint and iron ore. That's absolutely massive. Also in the top right of the mine, this was so hard without the store drift. I wish I would have known about it. There's a store drift in the top right rockling cave. It has granite all around it. So you can just put that granite straight into the rift and then teleport back down and use it all at once. It, I'm telling you guys, this is a huge deal. Definitely take advantage of the Spider's Nest quest. And let's actually cue a uh, little bit of a guide on how to actually complete this quest. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to walk you through it word by word or step by step, I should say. The first thing you're going to want to do is begin the quest. Start the quest by going to the location at Cliffside Trail. So if you actually bring this up, and I'm going to kind of walk you through this. It's going to be a little bit... Uh, unprepared of a walkthrough so hopefully you guys can kind of deal with that so the first thing we're going to do is like i said go to cliffside trail cliffside trail is going to be right here um it's going to be very very useful to actually go here and you're going to see a giant spider um and hit Control s to reveal a purple cliff click the purple cliff to walk past it you'll get knocked off triggering a cutscene to advance the quest number two you're actually going to meet the mysterious girl so after the cutscene a girl will appear in front of you uh, talk to her until she mentions luring out the spider with tar rats. Find the tar rats. So go to the small clearing nearby. If you actually go down here, the small clearing is right here at the south side of the episode two. Um, click on the fire in the area. You'll see three rats roasting by the side. This interaction prompts dialogue with a stranger who will ask for a favor in exchange for one of the rats. You fulfill the stranger's request. He will ask you for one golden marrow or marrow. Um, which is from the Mr. McGrish's garden, one snake eyeball from Snake's Clearing, and then two uncoated shields, which again take 32 level 32 carpentry. Using one ash log turned into two planks at the crafting bench for that uh, these uncoated shields, one ash log at the um, crafting benches down here. So very, very simple to get the actual shields themselves. But you are, like I said, going to need the golden marrow from Mr. McGrish's garden and the snake eyeball from the snake clearing. Snake clearing is also very easy to go here and kill one viper. You'll get an eyeball once the quest has begun. So very, very simple process. If the viper, by the way, is too strong, you can actually go to previous versions of the viper by right clicking the mob and turning them into the previous version. So very simple. So from there. You're going to actually uh, get the stranger with a blueprint for the shield. So you'll need to gather the remaining materials yourself, which is gathering items for the stranger. So Golden Morrow, talk to Mr. McGrish in his garden, ask about his morrow. He'll mention waiting for the huntsman to judge it. So if you go to Mr. McGrish's garden right by the house, he'll tell you he needs a badge basically out of you to judge his uh his morrow. So you'll go up to the Huntsman Lodge. There's a guy right here to talk to. Use all of the prompts. I'm not sure exactly what prompt it was, but he should be able to basically tell you he will give you a badge if you go and kill a, I believe it was a Spriggan. Once you kill the Spriggan, it'll automatically collect the item required. While in this area, like I said, kill a snake to collect a snake eyeball, um, and then you'll return to the Huntsman and Mr. McGrish. And while you're returning to the Huntsman to receive the Judge Badge, on your way back to Timberwell Green, grab the Morrow from the Small Garden by the Lumber Bank. Head to Timberwell Side Road and find some gold paint. Use the paint on the Quest UI to apply it to the Morrow. The Quest UI is obviously just going to be this part up here where you have all this. You can actually left-click, use it. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not, I don't do guides often, so sorry. This is all kind of additional. I wasn't going to do a guide, but... I kind of wanted to give you guys the opportunity to take advantage of me giving you a guide. Hopefully it's helpful enough that you can get through it. Um, but uh, from there, on your way back to Timberwell Green, grab the morrow from the small garden by the lumber bank, head to Timberwell Side Road, find some gold paint, use the paint on the Quest UI to apply it to the morrow like we said, and then talk to Mr. McGrish to access the morrow. Then swap it with your painted version to steal his golden marrow. Uh, complete the shields and final assembly. So this is where you'll actually go and craft the shields if you have not already. Um, and then you'll return to the stranger. So if you go back down here to return to the stranger, um, and I'm completely missing it. Let me go over here. If you go back to the stranger, which is in the small clearing, uh, this is where you're going to be able to basically put it all in the fire, turn it into what he wants, the anti, 
uh, acid shields, and then you'll do a cutscene through the acidic avenue, and then you'll be at the pool of rainbows, which also, by the way, unlocks um, not just the new spell, the store drip, but it unlocks dying as well because you'll get rainbow of colors or something there. So very, very useful. Um, from there, you'll go back to where that spider was on the cliff, and you'll use the tar rat on the border. So let's go back over there one more time. That's going to be here cliffside. You're going to use the tar rat on the border, and it'll be a whole ordeal there. Then you'll walk across because the spider's not up there anymore. And uh, it's a very simple, simple quest when you have a little bit of a guide to it. Hopefully, this helps you a little bit. Like I said, I didn't really prepare a guide for you, so hopefully that was helpful. I just wanted you guys to know, though, that the store drift is a game changer, and you should definitely be focusing on getting level 32 uh, carpentry because it's going to help you with every single profession quite a bit. Um, so that's just my basic understanding of the spider's nest, the quest itself, and how to complete it. So hopefully that guide was somewhat useful. I know it was just talking and blabbering, but um, if it can just give you a little bit of help during it, I'm sure you guys can figure out the rest. So hopefully we'll have more guides for here in the future. I don't typically do quest guides, but uh, if we do, I'll make them a little better than this one. So thank you guys again. I just want to make sure to get this out to you guys so you knew about the new banking possibilities. Thanks. I'll see you all in the next one.